Do you take Sean to live together in the union of marriage, to take him as your best friend and partner in life? Sean, do you take Nicole to live together in the union of marriage, to take her as your best friend and partner in life? It is often said that actions speak louder than words, so is marital vow. Marital vow is not all about married people, but to enlighten the mind of single people who are thinking on making that commitment. We also talk about the obstacles some marriages have experienced and how they overcome those obstacles. On to the edition, our topic is Do Not Take Family Over Family with Pastor Isaac Kana from the Kindle Light Delivery Ministry. I'm Fernika Kara, your host. Let's take a break and be right back. Do you take Sean to live together in the union of marriage, to take him as your best friend and partner in life? Sean, do you take Nicole to live together in the union of marriage, to take her as your best friend and partner in life? Welcome back on Marital Vow. Like I said, our topic today is do not take family over family. But our last week's discussion, we talked about failure in marriage. So we have to elaborate for 10 minutes on that topic before going to our main topic. Welcome, Pastor Isaac. Thank you, V, for having me. And it is pleasure. So how can I like ministry? Well, I... The ministry is God's responsibility, so I, um, I just say God is doing his own thing. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming to you again. Thank you. Okay, well, our last week discussion, we talked about failure in marriage. I would just like to get your view. What do you think about failure in marriage? What are the causes of failure in marriage? All right, thank you again for having me. And <clears throat> I'm glad to be here. I see this, uh, this platform to be very informative. Okay, thank you. And I'm also glad to be here because I, the Bible tells me, go ye into the world and share the gospel. And people kind of misunderstand when they say share the gospel. The gospel, in the other word, means good news. Okay. And good news means the plan of God for your happiness and salvation. Mm -hmm. So whatever I give that brings somebody happiness, that's considered good news. Okay. So my being here, I think I'm here to deliver good news. Mm -hmm. Back to the question of failure in marriage. Okay. Well, you know, I hear a lot of people give a lot of different, different reasons and justification. But I'd like to tell you straight up front that marriage, the failure of marriage is the result of love. Oh, okay. Just okay. as simple as that. Love is the cause of the failure of marriage. So love is the cause of the failure in marriage. Exactly. Okay. Let me explain myself and tell you what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You see, love, the first of all, we have to understand what brings our relationship is love. Okay. What motivates relationship and love? But you have to understand in what context do you understand that word love? That's what the problem is. I can define love and understand it differently from the way you understand it. Mm -hmm. People think when the husband or your partner give you money, that's love. Other people think when the person cares for you, that's love. So you see that one word, but they have different interpretation. Now, <clears throat> let me put it in two categories, depending on where you find yourself. If you are in a Christian dome, you probably look at the definition of love to come from 1 John 4, 8, which is God is love. Okay. If you come from the universal, or you have the universal phenomenon or the worldview, you probably look at love as um, intense feeling and deep affection. So depending on how you define it, that's where your problem is. Okay, that's nice. And today, I just want us to stay within the universal approach, meaning the way how everybody look at it. Most love as established based on love, more relationship as established based on love that is defined as affections and feeling. And that love, that particular love, 
will produce conflict, confusions, and problems. Oh, interesting. Interesting. You know, when we discuss over our topics, some, we have so many feedbacks, but I'm just going to read one okay. from Paul. Paul says sometimes the causes of failure in marriage is trust. From my own view, it's trust. And I saw from Romans, Romans also said that sometimes we don't call the people last name due to security reason. Okay. Romans said that most of the failure in marriage is sex. If you start with sex, because the other day you were discussing about sex. So if you start with sex and don't end with sex, there will be a serious, 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 serious problem. He posted a serious, you wrote a serious three times. There will be serious, serious problems in that relationship. And your guest talk about dress code, he was 100% right. When we see a woman in that dress code, the way she dressed, sis, and at the end of that relationship, or we join into marriage, and you don't dress the like you dress the old man, definitely I will lose love and trust. So that's my view. All right, thank you, V. You know, <laughs> I like them. They are trying to define the situation. But I said this, I just told you, mm -hmm. the reason for failure and success in, love, in, in relationship is love. And the, the way you define it, I just told you that if the love that brought you together is mm -hmm. motivated by your feeling and affection is conditional. Because what dragged me to you, there's a reason why I brought your feeling to you. Okay. I hope I hope I'm making myself clear. Mm -hmm. When when the when your relationship is motivated by love is defined by your feeling and affection, it's, it's, it's conditional love. Mm -hmm. So like you're saying, the men say, look, okay, because the person dress, the way they dress, that what attracted them to them. That's what brought that feeling. Mm -hmm. So when that thing no longer there, the condition move away. So you have a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting, interesting, interesting. So you have a problem. So without love, there can be no relationship. There's no relationship. No, anywhere in the world, yeah, nobody will get into a relationship. What a bilateral relationship or country, I don't care what you define, there will be relationship. There will be love. So, so like, I, if I almost to you right, so with when the love crash relationship, everything crash. That's what you're trying to say. What? The love, love, love is a pillow. Of yeah, love is, love is the motivating factor. Okay. But I just define love in two ways. The one from First John four eight, we say God is love. If you look at it from that way, then it is there's no condition. Okay. God don't have conditions. He loves us without conditions. You look at John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. He didn't say because of that God love you. He said because He loved us that way He sent His Son. It's no condition. But if I love you because your head do, that's a condition. Okay. So that, that relationship that is on a condition is bound to fail. It will create problems, it will create conflict, it will create crisis. Mm. That's interesting. So one of the paid, or let's say the paid in relationship or that causes marriage to fail is love. When there is no love, there can be no relationship. Okay, we, we're going to our main topic. But before we go to our main topic, you know, like brain people believe that when they are not seeing ring on your finger, they, they don't believe that you are married. But I say ring is a symbol. So to clear our viewer doubt or some of our viewer doubt, if I may ask Pastor Isaac, are you married? Yes, ma'am, I am. I'm very <laughs> married. <laughs> okay, is your wife Yeah. No, my wife is overseas right now. All I right. for overseas. Okay. I came on ministry. Okay, that's nice. So interesting. So I see why you're talking about love because distance love to a play a major role in communication too. Okay, our main topic will say to not take family over family. You know, you know, every time I hear these things, it, it, it just makes me look love. And sometimes people believe. Okay, let me let me make it a little bit clearer here. Okay. Maybe you say the father-in-law or the mother-in-law. And the other spouse is taking their parents in the in the other person's mind, they are taking their parents more than them. Okay. But let me say this to you. There is no love that is taken above another one. Mm. Let me explain what I mean. I just told you. The love we're discussing right now is the one that is determined by your feeling and your affections. So me, it is conditional. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the 
If I see a woman out there, or a man see a woman, what draw their love is because of the look, number one, the way they present themselves. So if, if a man see a woman, he loves the woman because of the way she look, the way she talk, the way he take care of him, his house, his clothes. Those are things that make him to love her. But that love is okay. But what see that love is a separate love. If he's talking to his mom, you gotta find out. Because if you say the person take that mother before me, you gotta ask yourself, what the condition? This man love you, you know, look, but maybe his mom, when it comes to a vast, that's why he loves her. So because he goes there for a vast does not mean he likes the mother, but the condition for loving you is different from the condition for loving the mom. Okay. And to make it clear here, say for example, if you bring the mother in law and the wife here and ask the guy, look, let's assume your 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 love, your attraction for the person is based on sex. So between the mother in law and who do you choose? <laughs> I would choose the wife. So does that mean he loved the wife more than the mother? You see, that's why people get confused. The condition for loving is different. So based on the condition that had the attached to, to that person. But it's not because it's over the other person. I love my mom because of maybe a vase. I love you because of the way you look. I love you because of the way you cook. So that's a difference. So nobody is above their friend. It's just the conditions are different. Mm, just because they, um, like I said, from the... Family, when I define family in my own world, family is someone I love you unconditionally and your shortcoming. But who who are the family? What is the main family they're talking about? Is it your wife and children or your extended relative, your mom, your sister, your brother? <laughs> you just answer the question. You use the word extended. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I want to know the 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 okay. the, 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 the money too. The two families, the husband and wife. Know. Yeah, which one? Your husband and wife and their offspring. Okay. Of uh, the family that we're talking about, and the Bible tells us in Second John, I mean Genesis chapter two, verse twenty-four. Okay. The man will leave his mom and father and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one. Who is that? Who are you talking? About? Your husband and the wife and their seven and their and their and their offspring. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Ask a question. You see. He said, what is God's purpose for family? Wow. You know, then you got to look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 down to 28. He said, God created us so that we can manage the earth for him. I'm just paraphrasing. Okay. Our role is to manage. Look, let me say this. Everyone on earth right now, they are serving as ambassador for heaven. So our role is to, to do according to God's will. If you look at the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth. You think the kingdom will come? No. The things of the of the heaven, that's what we ought to bring on earth. As God's children. That's what we are here to do. Okay, everyone is learning, but let me just read that first. It's Genesis, sorry, it's Genesis 1, verse 28. The Lord spared out a reason for a family in Genesis 1, verse 28, and it's really easy. When he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens. And over everything that moves on earth, families are to fill the earth. So I, I wanted to clarify something. I, I hope you understand the reading. Can you help me to break that reading down? Because I want to understand you see, <laughs> Because you mentioned it, so. Yeah. You see, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, between 7, I mean 27 to 28, God is telling us. I just told you to manage the earth. Okay. That's exactly what it is. Run the the the, the heaven on earth. Run heaven on earth. That's your responsibility to run heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. So, but in doing that, God wants us to multiply, to increase. God said we should we should we should progress. We should succeed. So he wants us to multiply, but the main thing is to bring heaven on earth. 
God wants us to multiply. That's one heaven desire. God wants us to live according to His word. That's that's the heaven desire. God wants us to be blessed. That's heaven desire. God wants us to increase. That heaven desire. Everything He said is about. Everything that is in heaven, we are responsible to make sure it's on earth. That's what exactly what it is in brief. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's that brings me to the question, and I ask, what is it called when you disconnect from your family? When you disconnect you from your family, we're talking about spouses, yeah, and children. Then you got a failure establishment. Before I go deeper, let me say something. You see, the family. It's like a cooperation, a successful cooperation with the president, the vice president, and the board. But if you don't if you don't recognize these things, the family will fail. Mm. The, the husband is the president and CEO of that family. The wife is the vice president. The children are member of the board. So the day you see your family sitting down together and calling your children and say, this is what I want to do, what do you advise? That's a good cooperation. It's, it's bound to succeed. Okay, I I heard you saying about your wife and children, but and then that brings me to another question. It is okay to distance yourself from your family because some people say I'm already married now, so I take my family as my first priority. But it is okay to distance yourself from your extended family when you are No, married? it's not. That's not what the Bible requires us to do. He said the both of you should be one. So if you're one, when you distance, that means you're separating already. Then you're not in conformity with God's word. But let me say this. You see, people cannot play with words to satisfy their desire. This is what I tell people. When your intent is different from your actions, you're pretending. Hmm. What do I mean by that? If my intent for leaving you here to go to Nuku Town is not to support you, but I tell you, I'm supporting, I'm pretending. Like in my case, I want to do the work of God. Okay. And she understands that. We talk about it for months. We seriously talk about it. I have to convince her. And so, in as much as I don't want to be distant from her, but you have to have something called priority. Between her and God, which one first? God. For my so if own. God choose me to do a responsible to care on the job, the same God who made me, the God can preserve us. So that's how I see it. Mm, okay. Okay, as a as a man and you you live with your that comes to your young days now. You live with your mother, your father, your sibling. And you decided to go on your own as a man and marry and have kids. In that process now. How do you leave your family? Well, is it you just going to work out one money to say, oh, I'm going, or I'm going to leave my How How the process? First of all, I need to convince my parents mm -hmm. that I'm capable of my own responsibility by my actions. I can't wake up in the house and don't do the housework, but I say I respond, I went out there. <laughs> If, if my parents believe that I am mature enough, I'm responsible enough, they will help me out through the process. They will usher me into that process. But more people think by the time you reach 21, so I can't, my parents, I'm fine, I, I gotta go. No, no. Let your parents usher you. When they usher you, that's a blessing you're taking with you. Mm -hmm. And the way they will usher you will be determined by your, your, your ability to manage yourself. Because look, let me say, every parent, I don't care how old that child is, when they're out there, anything happens to them, you are touched. So don't think they don't, they don't because you be no 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 they will always care about you, so you need to create a situation where they will be satisfied about your going and bless you going out. When I rather leave, I have to explain to my parents, hello, that I have to go out, and I justify the reason why I got to go out. And we sit at a table. The first time I ever had dinner with my uncle. Because those days our parents and they were disciplinary. Mm -hmm. My uncle invited me for a dinner and I was shocked. I was scared. Even though I was big. Remember, I was school teacher. Mm -hmm. But I was scared. Because the way I was brought up. And I said, but my uncle invited me for dinner. Anything wrong? I got it. I was, you know, as big as I am, I was school teacher. 
And I'm, I'm sitting in front of the table like, shocked and scary. He said, cut your food. I said, cut my food? I'll cut my food with my uncle. <laughs> he said, cut your food. So after I cut my food, he said, I heard you say you want to leave to go out. I said, yes, sir. He said, I just call you to let you know that I think you're right. Your decision is right. I didn't say to him, but my father told him. Okay. But what made him to think that way is my actions, my maturity. And let me say that before we go ahead. You see, people think because of the responsibility you have, that then you are responsible. No. Anybody, that's not true. You are not responsible because of the responsibility you have. Responsibility is the response of your, it is the responsiveness to your responsibility. Mm. The way you respond, that will make you responsible. Let me put it this way. Your ability to respond responsibly to responsibility, that will make you responsible. And now what you have is the way you take care of it, that will make you responsible. You see the older people say, that man is irresponsible. But the man got away from children, but why they call you irresponsible? Because they are looking at how he manages him. So, so. Okay, that, that, that brings me to the question because you talk about responsibility. So that brings me to the question when you are married because sometimes the woman that you marry will not love your family. And they, you say, okay, I, some people will say, I have children now. So I don't think that the way I'm supposed to take care of my mother or father, I don't think it would be like that because my wife, my children come first. So talking about responsibility, that brings me to the question, what does the Bible say about taking care of your family? <laughs> the Bible is clear. Okay. It's very, very clear and serious about it. He that cannot take care of his family, the Bible frowns at you. Seriously. I don't remember, the, but I know it. I read it over and over. Even to become a bishop or clergyman, you have to be able to take care of your family. If you can't, you can't take care of your congregation. Because God gave us a responsibility to manage the one he gave to us. Your wife is God's gift to you. What you do with her is your response to God's request for you. So to neglect your responsibility, God will not appreciate it. Okay, I'll, I'll thank you very much. But I was saying something concerning when your family and your family is in a conflict Mother in law, like me, mother in law, come in the house. Okay, before I go to that question, let me just say is it important or is it accepted for your mom to leave her house and come into your room to live? You know, let me say this. If you mind, let me just diverse a little bit and mm -hmm. bring you to understand certain things. I just told you every relationship is motivated by love. Okay. And when the love is defined by your feeling and affections, it's conditional. The reason why you find this conflict is because people are entering into conditional love. But if I say that I don't say the rest of it, then I mean I'm not being honest or I'm not helping anybody out here. So, so this is it. Any good relationship, any good relationship that you want to last, you want to be joyful, you want to be rewarding, there's one word you need to look at. When you look at that word and you follow through, it's forever. Mm. And that word is compatibility. Oh. What the word compatibility mean? Compatibility is, it is where two persons are able to exist without confusion or problem. Mm. That's compatibility. And when I give you the word compatibility, I give you four areas you need to be compatible with. Once you work, when the four areas are compatible, it doesn't matter who that, where it is, why that relationship is bound to survive throughout. Mm. You see, sometimes when you go to the altar and the pastor says, to death do a part. Maybe people don't understand it. Just, hey, they're about yelling. But to clarify, to death do a part, he will make another statement. He said, in health or in sickness. In riches or in poor, meaning that love it has no condition. Mm. That's why it is. It has no condition. So, but now when you come to the world view, how do you how do you how do you blend that with the word of God? So then you use the word compatibility because the word says God created us in His own image. What that means is that it's not that we look like God, but we have the same character. That's what may all be able to coexist with God. So compatibility is the same. 
So now, when I talk of compatibility, I look at four things. The first thing you look at is communication, compatibility in communication. Okay. Communication is as vital as oxygen in a relationship. Mm. If you right now as we talk here, just black your nose in your mouth and see if you survive. <laughs> You're not. It's the same thing. The day you start talking, your relationship, the relationship is not there. It's on life support. Mm. You're only hoping that maybe communication will start, which will be the breathing air, or the person will die. That's all it is. Communication is as vital as oxygen in any communication. I don't care whatever whatever relationship. Is as bad as communication. So, if you are able to communicate with your partner, I mean, clear, direct, honestly. V, I have my mom, and you know, my mom is now well, and you lay down everything in order you come to understand. What will be the problem when the mom comes to the house? <laughs> there will be no problem. Is it? Communication is one of the pillows. Let me come back. The second thing you need to consider when we talk about compatibility, mm -hmm. you need to look at spiritual compatibility. I see people say, oh, I will change that woman, I will change that man. Do you have the power? Only God can change the person. Sure. Now, people don't recognize that. If you are not spiritually compatible and you believe Christ so dearly, you like God, you want to go to church. By the time you come to church, your partner is concerned why you stay long because they don't know God. So because of that, there's a conflict. Because of lack of compatibility, and that's a conflict. Because you go to church, you sincerely go to church to pray God and message, you still on. You go to Bible meeting and pray on. So there's a problem. And this is it. You know, the Bible clearly told us that. I think it's. Oh, I'll figure out what it is. But it said, when the two of you agree. When two agree. Or anything it is that is concerning, it is established. So you are on the opposing side. So what will work for you in your relationship? <laughs> okay, that that brings me to the question because I keep hearing you talking about uh, family is a gift from God, what is a gift from God. So that brings me to the question that is, what family is a greater gift from God? Well, I will speculate because the only person that answer that question will be God himself. <laughs> so to be honest with you, okay, yeah, yeah, that's I'm, gonna speculate. I'm gonna speculate. What I think it is the greatest gift because it is the machinery through which the earth can be fully managed. Hmm. Let me explain myself. It is the greatest gift because in order to multiply the earth, that's the only means. To multiply the earth. That's a good one. And uh, my next question will be, how do you separate from your family? I think I have asked that question already. But before we go to my next question, this show is called Marital Vow, where we discuss about relationship issues and marriage issues. It's not just about being out there. It's not just about being married, but it's about understanding and how long your marriage can last without conflict. So long you do constant communication. With that, let's take a short break and be right back. Do you take Sean to live together in the union of marriage, to take him as your best friend and partner in life? I do. Sean, do you take Nicole to live together in the union of marriage, to take her as your best friend and partner in life? show called Marital Vow and today edition I'm here with Pastor Isaac Kana. He's pastor from the Kingdom Light Ministry and today our topic is to not take family over family. Okay thank you Pastor Isaac and we were talking and I want to ask in terms as a head of the home in terms of salary how can it be divided between family tax and family tax? All right, thank you. You see, I, I was just telling you about to have a successful relationship in marriage. Mm -hmm. The four things you need to look at when I talk about compatibility. Number one, I said was communication. Number two, was spiritual. Number three, is financial compatibility. Okay. 
what financial comparability means that it doesn't matter how much you make but both of you need to know and make decision on it mm. you see that's where people make mistakes because you think you work for the money so it's you are no the bible says the two shall become one so you are how can you hide your money for yourself can you do that so it became the <laughs> way you hide it for the other person okay that's not true you see those are things people need to watch out for financial compatibility is very important financial compatibility doesn't mean how much you make but whether whether that you make it or not you should have a sin take a take a sensor in the library all in my room in the house how many of you know the salary of work not, not even 20 percent no Okay. That's the failure. That's what caused failure in your marriage. You see, it, it, it's not a matter when you want to apportion it. When two of you agree, it's easy. Nobody going to confusion. There's no confusion because if you agree to give my man two dollars and okay. I agree, how can we force somebody? So if two of you agree, where will confusion will come from with, about money? <laughs> there will be no confusion. So because they are not financially compatible, that's where the financial issue is coming from. But we women can say that our money is our money. The main money is both for our money. How do you understand how it No. You see, <laughs> you see, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the mistake people make who are entering into a relationship. Okay. Before you enter into a relationship, most cases the man will say, I won't marry you, right? Mm -hmm. What that man is trying to tell you, I'm walking the road, can't walk with me. So your response really I want is to make sure whether that road you really want to walk. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that this is the road you want to carry? That's when you start looking. The first thing you need to do, the, oh, we are, if you get a young fool, what, what you do, you need to go on date. That is where you have the opportunity to ask questions, to know. And you don't have a time frame to say, oh, I'll be on date two days now, so we should get. No, no, no. As long as you need to know, mm -hmm. that's the date. And I tell most of the players from my country, I say, look, when you go on date, start that, let the man start carrying you to a restaurant because it's not going to keep you focused on your question. It distracts you. It carries you to a club. You're not going to ask no sound question. You'll go to a park and sit and talk one to one about your question. Hey, my man, how much money do you make? What is your expenses? How do you take care of your family? These are things you need to know. Based on that, if you satisfy with then you're in a relation, there will be no confusion when it comes to finances. Okay. Because then you convene that financially you guys are compatible. Okay. That's nice. Okay, we are talking about family, and we had a case before where in which the, the man or the woman, at that time they've been married for 10 years, but there is no child so in that case it is right for the main wife let no it is right sorry it is right for the main mother or his sister or his father to approach the woman on that issue it's not right just a short answer and this reason right. why it's not right i just told you genesis told us the two shall be one. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel when somebody calls in you? I feel bad. If you feel bad, then why you look at it to be to the woman? So this is the thing. You are not spiritually compatible. You see, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really focus on compatibility. What is it that this guy must have in common that will make all the stay together? What is it that will not make force on? Because remember, the word compatibility means where two persons can coexist without confusion or problem. So what is it that two of you will stay in your house and no confusion will be here? And that's why I say on date, those are the questions you need to ask. What's your relationship with your parents? How do you maintain your relationship? That will give you an answer. Whether, oh, you know what? We can talk about my parents. We can talk about your parents. Because honestly, when you both are talking about this situation, there will be no conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where we make problems. We have the problem when we get in a relationship. We don't take time to know these things. In we just join together based on our feeling and our affection. And that relationship, as I told you, is conditional. So when that condition change, the relationship has a problem. Okay, that brings me to the question that I I, I will ask. Like, okay, is it right, hundred percent right, to co shape before marriage? You know, as a Christian, <laughs> you know, when it comes to English, I'm very careful because that's one of the things I love the best in school, and I understand the basic principle when it comes to English. Sometimes the word, the meaning of the word, could be different based on who's using it and where they're using it, and sometimes they got something to call. 
uh, what do you call it, that determine the way you say it can give a different meaning. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about co courtship, then I'm not sure how to really answer it, but how would I get to know somebody if I have no link with them? Okay. How will you how will you really get to know somebody when you don't have a link with them? Because when you look at kosher, mean that oh look, you stay that and stay this side. You so how do you get to know them? You see, people have to understand the scripture very clearly. I'm not trying to brag about scripture, but people need to understand. How do people get how do you get to know? First of all, how do you get to know God? Ain't gotta to go to church for it? Yeah, yeah. So how you get to know that person? Mm. You know, people need to open their minds according to scripture. The people just, you know, I don't like to say anything much, but the question I ask is, how do you get to know this person? When there's no coexistence, when there's no relation, because coexistence means ain't no talking together or moving, doing things together or doing something or something, interacting together. That's what it means, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you know that person when there's no interaction, there's no anything, no formal communication, there's no formal connection? That's nice. That brings me to the question. And since you are a pastor, I need to ask the question. It is right, right, to have sex before marriage with, him, with your married partner? You know, I, I, I get I get I get beaten most of the time when I get this question. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time I answer this question publicly. Yeah. The congregation asks this question a lot. You know, I got this nickname in church where the people call me as it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what my congregation as it is. Okay. Because you know, you 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 don't want to confuse the people. There is something called ordinance. There is something in the Bible that called recommendation by Paul. Because sometimes you read Paul writing. Paul says you should not get married, you know, and this, this, this. But at the end of the day, you always make it clear. He said this is just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's just an advice. So, you see, when people say, oh, you can't have sex before marriage. Okay, let me, let me say, okay, we agree. But now I'm talking about compatibility. What break people are in relationship and sex? Mm -hmm. So how do you know the sexual desire of your partner before you enter into it? If you don't know and you enter into it, after you go to the auto, you enter and you come back and you know it, then what happened? You break the relationship. Which one you want? <laughs> That's it. You know, people need to be, <laughs> you know, you know, I get beaten by this question a lot, so I, I'm not I'm not afraid, I'll say it the way it is. Because that's what I ask people. I say, okay, if you say they should not have sex before they get married. Most of relationships are broken up because of sexual Interface. difference. Mm -hmm. So say I don't know the person sexually. Because about, according to their pastor, we say, oh, don't do it until you get married. Okay, fine. After you came in, the author will come back. The man don't function. So you're supposed to stay with him? Or you're supposed to be somebody in the street. So which one is much better? To be a daughter? <laughs> That's nice. And what drives me to this question, I think you have answered, you have get my point. Oh, uh, there's a lady that sent me, that DM me. I'm not going to mention her name, but she wanted us to discuss it on the topic. Okay, she met the guy on the internet and they were together, they've been talking. So when the guy came time to marry her, because she noticed that each time she want to make a thing, the guy will resist. And the pastor said, no, it's not good. You guys shouldn't have sex before marriage. The guy agreed. After they married, the day of the honeymoon, the man stayed resisting. That was when the man told her that I will once again. So my man who died. I changed, but I only marry you to close the shame. So instead of her getting angry with the man, she never. She said she went to the pastor church. She said that pastor not going to her service except he set her properly. 
And in settling your problem, it's, it's not just like talking. She said, V, I told you now, it's not just like talking. It's making my man, my husband go to function because you are the one that stopped us. That was the reason I asked the question. In your but that's, you know, seriously, that's the truth I'm telling people. You know, I get beat up. People go to the theologian with say, oh, my man, you tell me people wrong thing. What's the wrong thing? You want a person to be a daughter? <laughs> to, for a person to be a daughter and for a person to know beforehand so that they can evolve what is supposed to be. Which one better? Okay. You know, people need to be real here in this Christian dome. People need to be very honest in the in the, in the Bible. Okay, that brings me to our church as the pastor can say that if you if you and the woman have had funds before and you're getting married, you don't have to march in the church. You have to go in the office because you are a sinner. Is it right? <laughs> you know, people, people, people get misconstrued by these biblical references in scripture. Let me take you back to, I think it's in Matthew. What the Pharisees told Jesus, they're complaining about his disciple not washing their hand. Mm -hmm. It's against the law. They classified as sinner. And Jesus told them, but why are you transgressing against the law because of your tradition? You see, most churches hold on to a tradition and forget the scripture itself. And that's why I think I preach on that one day I, I talk about walking, following Jesus on the wrong path. You think you're doing the right thing, but your tradition has blinded you from the truth about the gospel. Mm -hmm. Going to the altar is making commitment before God. But you're telling them, no, you don't need to do that. You know, it's like when you go to church and someone says, oh, you want to sin or bench. So that you, will, that, that you, that you the one will forgive their sin or that God will forgive their sin. Because when you take them from the sin of bench, that means you are clearly saying their sin is forgiven. You have the power to forgive their sin. You see, people have to understand these things then very clearly. Hmm. So you classify your sin or will you forgive him? <laughs> that make him go right now. Even while I talk to you, you can be meditating and God can forgive him. So what do you, how do you know the man is forgiving? How do you know the man's sin is gone? Just encourage them. Just give them the good news. Wow. Okay. Pastor Kanan, trust me, I already, really enjoying this topic. And I show my viewer enjoying the topic, but we have to go to every long road that is an end. Okay. Our next topic next week would be... Sorry. Our next topic next week, I would think it would be, who do women consider a good man? That would be our next topic. Who do women consider a good man? But before we go, Pastor I say, Kana, is there anything you have to say? Is there any advice you get to give out there? Thank you. Look, let me tell the young folks, especially the young ones are trying to get married. First thing I want you to do, go up a date. Okay. Create a period where you get to know the person. Ask serious questions. Start being careful about the person's look. Start being careful about the money they give you. Ask serious questions. Man, do you have a family? How do you support your habit? You ask basic questions. And this is a secret I tell girls. When you ask the question, you can know whether the man wants you or don't want you. I say, okay, I love you. Say you, you say you love me? Yeah. Why you love me? Listen to the answer. <laughs> More men will say, oh, I just love you. Do you believe that? Can you love no. somebody just because you love them? <laughs> that tells you as a red flag in that conversation. If I oh, you are black, the person no I'm not talking to anybody because mm. they lie. Okay. When they answer that question, I just love you. Honestly, what they say is, oh, I just want a sex. But if somebody is playing your feature with you, they will say, oh, babe, I think you're a woman that could keep. That answer you give you time to still ask more questions. That means that person has a positive thinking about a future. But I just love you is not a thing. You know what I tell my congregation, they love the girls in the house. I say, look, they do the, the men say, you won't take you out for a day. Say, let's go to Bible study. <laughs> See whether the person will go with two times in Bible study. Because your success in relationship is based on God. So if they may really be what he say, he wants us, then he will go to Bible study and see your participation in the Bible study. They say, oh, you know, when we're married, then we'll go to your church. Are you kidding me? So why are you creating conditions to go to church? 
know, so you know, I just want to tell people to watch up. Go on a date. When you go on a date, look for signal of compatibility. Look for communication compatibility, financial compatibility, sexual compatibility, and communication compatibility. Whether you guys can really talk honestly. Now the guy who will be hiding your phone on the other side, pull on, vib on vibration, so you can't get it. <laughs> no, it don't work that way. Okay. Why are you marrying me there? I can't. You have phone. I can't. I don't have access to it. And we are one. Can you hide your phone from yourself? If you can't hide it from yourself, don't hide it from me. These are the mistakes people make. And I, that's what I encourage them to do. Watch out these things. And these things are the red flag. Okay. Thank you very much. That's Pastor Isaac Connor from the Kindle Light Delivery Ministry. And I hope you learn from him. And we hope to see you on our platform next time. They shouldn't be the first and the last. We hope to see you again. Thank you, Miss God. The show is Married of Vow, where we discuss about marriage issues. Feel free to come on our show or DM in just in case you have a topic that you want all to discuss. The number to call is 0776 60 6199. I repeat, 0776 60 6199 or 0886 65 4299. Our next topic will be Who do women consider as a good man? Hope to see you to discuss that topic. I'm Ferenica Carter, Santa Sin Station. Thank you for viewing. Do you take Sean to live together in the union of marriage? to take him as your best friend and partner in life. Sean, do you take Nicole to live together in the union of marriage, to take her as your best friend and partner in life?